hugged your guns and butchered today. Do you smoke for her day? This was going out to our meditators. Doctor Irvin. Welcome back, everyone. Today I'm here with Whitney Justice, who was co-founder of Area 420 down here in Moffitt, Colorado. Her and Mike Biggio started this program up around five years ago, you tell me. And uh, could you tell me a little bit how you got the idea and how you went through the process of getting this area started up there, Whitney? Sure, yeah. First, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. I appreciate you showing up. Yeah. Well, when uh, cannabis became legal in the state of Colorado, I noticed uh, the industry was a bit of a mess. They had uh, grows over here, grows over there. It was kind of spread out, which is not good for anybody. Um, it's not that safe to be growing out in the middle of nowhere. You know, you're more subject to um, theft and other issues, also neighbors and things. So we, I, I really thought it was a good idea just to organize things a bit and find a, a place where everyone can do the same thing all together. All the grows can be side by side and share uh, camaraderie, community, and um, just create a little little cannabis village a little centralization yeah. here a little cannabis destination yes uh, i love the idea i was telling somebody else it's kind of like my cannabis field of dreams if you build it they will come that's right and they are showing up uh, it's a great idea and um did you consume cannabis before you thought of this i'm i'm sure you did growing up in colorado Could you, oh, when yeah. did you start consuming well let's see i uh shared a, a joint with Jerry Garcia back in 1987. And I'd smoked a little bit of weed before that, but that was a, that was kind of a milestone for me. So yeah, I've been known to smoke weed and do other things like that. I used to be on the Grateful Dead tour, following the dead in the eighties and nineties. And, uh, you know, it's part of the, part of the culture. I got a couple of other friends who've done that. So I've heard some stories. I didn't hear of the Grateful Dead until Actually, it was too late. I uh, was into sports and just never was into that type of music. It's when never too isolated late. Isolated in West Virginia. Oh, oh yeah. I follow them now. I, I understand the reason. And oh, good. Followed a couple jam bands and know the what what goes on. That's great. <laughs> so there is cannabis around there. Have you ever gotten in trouble for cannabis before it was legal here in Colorado? Only with my mom. Only with your mom. Yeah. Have you ever had any bad experiences with cannabis like you're ever eating too many edibles or too something too strong or like something that just made you feel anxious not really i've had a couple of times when when edibles sort of first made their appearance you couldn't really tell how much was in it or I, sometimes i got a little too high and i thought oh my gosh i'm really high but then i always remind myself i'm not going to die from this so just Turn on the Almond Brothers or something and wait it out. No, I said Pink Floyd and just sit yeah. on the couch in the right. dark and it'll yeah. pass. For it'll a pass. Hours. Uh, we had a friend who was actually a drummer in a band, didn't consume much. We were going to a show in Pittsburgh. It was like an hour drive from where I went to college. And he got off work, ate an edible real quick, cookie. Don't know how strong it was. Uh, drank one beer on the ride up. We sat down. We were about 20, 30 minutes early for the show, and we had a beer, and we were pretty stoned off the head of us. And we're like 20 minutes into the show, where, where'd he go to? And we say, oh, well, let me go check the restroom, because that's the last time we remember him saying, I'm going to the restroom. He was passed out by the urinal. Oh. Crying, telling us, we got to take him to the hospital. Oh, wow. Just because his blood pressure dropped or something, it was, it was pretty bad for him. But, uh, yeah, that's just one of the stories I've had. But we had to take him to the hospital, basically, put him to IV and told oh, him, you're all right. And when his color came back, they sent him on his way. Wow, wow. You've never seen anything like that? I'm sure you have one. I've never on had a tour, any... but not from Canada. Oh, I've never had anything like that happen. I've had uh, some nights after, you know, drinking alcohol. I've had some fun times, <laughs> <laughs> interesting times with that over the years. But uh, no, I can't say I've ever had any kind of bad trip on marijuana no. do you have any favorite strains that you like i like indica and i really what i'm getting into now are these wana um sleepy time edibles you take oh, yeah. like 10 milligrams and they have some cbd in them i take one of those and at night before i'm about to go to bed and 15 minutes later i'm are they the chocolate ones no no chocolate they're just the gummies. Uh, they're little gummies yeah yeah they have a different 
variety of mixtures of CBD and CBN. And yes, CBN. I, I think they even put melatonin in it, maybe. Oh, they're even. great. And then Anna, they're, they're, are they the fast acting ones? I take one of those every single night and I sleep for eight hours and I wake up feeling great. Normal yeah. edibles that we kind of grew up with. And then I got the, the fast acting ones within like, 30 minutes. minutes this is like 15. Yeah. yeah, those are nano emulsified or something, but they just hit faster, but they wear off a little quicker too. But the uh, fact is they do help you sleep and a lot of people really do find relief in that. Oh yeah. I don't need that. Up. My constant use during the day helps me sleep at night, oh. but I wake up four o'clock in the morning or oh, five o'clock okay. <laughs> in the morning when the sun comes up, whatever time that is, I'm, I'm up. So sometimes I'll need something to put me back to sleep. So I can sleep a little longer. Well, try those Wana edibles. They're delicious. I actually tried the CBN. If it contains CBN, it the CBN doesn't work on me. Oh, huh. And some medicines work the opposite. Like I would try some medicine that the doctor prescribed, and it would make me kind of delirious or anxious. Pseudoephedrine, which is one that mm-hmm. some people get not or uh, tired, lethargic off of, and I get wired. Oh, that's interesting. It has the opposite effect of me. Oh. So I don't know. Might be an ADHD thing. Maybe we Could helps be. me with that. Oh. Like a Ritalin affects people differently. Sure. Who knows? I don't know. Those uh those edibles work for me. So back to the Area 420. Yes. You had the idea. You came down here to mop it. Uh there's from what I understood, there's three phases, as people say, but it's basically three subdivisions. That's right. Three and, plat maps is how we separated those three phases. And what are the difference between these phases? All right. So phase one is um, we're sitting on phase one right now in the train cars. Um, and phase one is this whole area you can see right behind you. Um, it's of 100 acres. Uh, we have a total of 420 acres, which is kind of funny because it was a lot of different parcels kind of pieced together. We sort of cobbled together a lot of different parcels. And one day I said, hey, I wonder how many total acres this is. And I added up this one and that one. And I had to add it up twice. I couldn't believe it. It came to 420 acres. How funny. So the first phase is 100 acres. And um, we're sold out of the first phase. Um, We have three-phase power here, which is a big deal. That's what you need to run a year-round facility. Um, so we have mostly year round growers in phase one greenhouses, um, you know, phase two has, uh, no power. And, um, so those are all outdoor grows. So people are coming from May to October, uh, to grow outside with the sunshine net zero weed, I think, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Off the grid. Yeah. I I like the idea and that, um, phase three is even further down the road once phase two fills up and then you'll go to phase three. Exactly. Got you. And how many available spots are in phase two? As oh, well, we have just started selling those. So we have about a hundred left. And yeah. uh, so what I understand you're hooked up to the power grid here, but yes. the power grid that's there is not strong enough. It's interesting. There are two power companies. Um, so power companies have territories and Phase one of our development is in XL Energy um, in in XL Energy's territory. XL Energy has uh, a huge network um, and resources to pull from, so they have three phase power here. Um, phase two of our development is in another territory for another. It's a smaller co-op uh, power co-op called SLVREC San Luis Valley. I don't even know what it stands for. But they're smaller, and um, we can only get single-phase power there. So, so they're just a smaller company. Can the growers use generators there? Oh, yeah. And uh, what about in the future? Is there any plans for having electric there oh, if they get enough people? Yes. We have petitioned and requested uh, that, that SLV up their game a little bit or turn over the territory to XL Energy so we can get more power. But right now, I think it's a pretty good balance. We have a lot of indoor grows. We also don't want to cannibalize the industry by uh, increasing the supply too much. So we've sort of held back. We're not doing any advertising campaigns for our lots. We just It's all kind of happening organically. Uh, referrals and um, some of the growers on phase one want to buy 
a few parcels on phase two just to take advantage of that seasonal outdoor. Mm -hmm. So um, we're not, we don't want to flood the market. The market's flooded enough. So yeah, I've, I saw that on the news this morning. Yes. There's a little decline in sales. Right. Um, we don't want to. Part of that, well, I had talked to with some other people, the medical drop is change of law. People can't buy as much concentrate as they could before. So that's obvious. But on the rec side, I think there's a big push for uh, marketing instead of quality weed. And Colorado consumers aren't falling for it. Right. Instead of buying brand name with certain names on it and branded stuff, they want effective weed, not something that's mids and labeled incorrectly exactly. as something that's good or something they don't like. Not to say it's not good, not to knock anybody's brand. Right, right. But yeah. Um, so water, it is dry desert here. What is the water resource for all of this? Well, uh, we take water conservation really seriously because water is not something we want to waste. Um, actually, mm. it looks like a desert here, but under the ground mm. is the largest aquifer. Uh, I know it's the largest one in the state of Colorado. It may be even larger. I don't know. I can't make claims about it, but it's big. So under the ground, there's like a lake, basically, a huge aquifer um, that you have to have uh, very specific water rights to be able to tap into. So luckily we do have two water sources that are legal water sources for ca the cannabis industry, and it's highly regulated. We have to do uh, water reportings to the Department of Water Resources, and we have to pay into a subdistrict, a water subdistrict, and everything's very carefully monitored. We also charge our clients for the water to encourage them to conserve the water. So you were, you mentioned one more thing about water conservation that was important here. And I know it's a dry area and the water rights in Colorado are pretty strict. Absolutely. They should be stricter everywhere. Um, so we take our water conservation very seriously. And every grower here has a water meter and it's carefully uh, regulated. We get the, the meter certified every year. And uh, we do charge for the water to encourage the growers to conserve their usage, you know, to, to not waste any water. Um, and if you compare the water usage for the cannabis industry uh, as opposed to like alfalfa or potatoes or other, other ag um, agricultural applications, um, cannabis uses far less way less than than alfalfa especially yeah it's a regenerative thing too so it's yes. actually good for the soil yes uh, alfalfa is too but cannabis is much better from what i understand my yeah. geologic knowledge um so what are some of the future plans for area 420 well now that we've really done a great job of building up the commercial sector of the town i mean there are <laughs> when i came to moffitt five years ago there were only a hundred people here. It was a population of a hundred. And there were maybe, I don't know, three or four small businesses like a coffee shop and things like that. Um, now we have 76 individually owned cannabis cultivations. So that 76 small businesses have moved into this town of a hundred people in the last four years, basically. So um, now our responsibility is to build up the uh, housing and other commercial businesses like restaurants and uh, Airbnbs and things like that. So laundry, uh, all the other things that have, I mean, the cannabis industry grew so fast that no one's really had a time, a second to say, oh gosh, let's, let's start doing this. So uh, we'd like to get some good food out here. <laughs> so if anybody listening is a, has an interest in cooking some excellent Mexican, Cuban, Italian, anything, We'll take with food trucks included. Oh, yeah. Are they allowed food on trucks. premises? Yes. Uh, yeah, that would attract some people. Those are sure. highly mobile when people could come down and the area is great. And I'm, I can contest if there was something to eat, it'd be easier. And I see you got these buildings out here, these yurt looking buildings that are being constructed. Are those the Airbnbs that you're talking about? Well, that's those are going to be uh, housing for growers. So we built uh, small houses out of grain bins. So they look like little metal grain silos, like basically like a metal yurt. 
and I have 12 of them out here. So they'll be, I'll rent them long term to growers. Um, employee housing. Yeah, employee housing. Better than working for Vail. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are here at Area 420. There's a big festival. It is Harvest Festival. What are some other events that you have down here that will attract some people down? I know there's some great um, hot springs around. If you're here, that's a great area to hit. There's some sand dunes right down the road. There's also Crestone, which is a dark sky city or dark sky community where you see tons of stars at night in the Milky Way. That's Clear's right. Day. Yeah, Crestone's about 15 minutes away and it's a little hippie town with kind of funky houses made out of all kinds of different materials and it's it's just a very free place to live. Um, you can kind of do whatever you want over there. Um, it's nestled in the mountains. I love it. It's great. I just went for a big bike ride this morning out there. It's gorgeous. Yeah, I drove over this morning and saw the deer walking in the street. Uh, That's where yeah. the last time I was there, somebody was petting the deer. I know. Like, I don't actually, I didn't see him touching it, but I think he was having a conversation with it walking down the street. I was scratching a deer behind the ears this morning. <laughs> they are, they're like domesticated animals. Yeah. Um, and then of course, yeah, the, the sand dunes is a, I think it's a national park. Um, it's really fun to go to the sand dunes. I was there a couple of weeks ago and went, I guess you call it sandboarding, but it's like snowboarding on the sand. I'm not very good at it. I fell down about three times and then kind of gave up. But my friends who are snowboarders are better at it. So Yeah, I've seen pictures of it. I can pass. It's pretty I fun. Fell hard enough doing this. Uh, snowboarding yeah uh, falling on sand is going to hurt a little bit more and if it lands in, if it gets in your mouth yeah. but uh it's fun over there it's really pretty and then um like you said there are three hot springs there's uh, joyful journey hooper hot springs and valley view if you want to take all your clothes off you can go up there um so that's cool it's just a kind of a fun area so uh so watch county in the san luis valley it's uh different and there are aliens here too <laughs> For real. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, have you met them and had conversations? I might be one. I don't know. I think we all could be. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I highly appreciate you coming on the show. Is there anything else that you want to add and let the viewer or listeners out there uh, know today? Hey, I'm just thrilled. I mean, it's incredible um, growing up in a time when you could get arrested for just like nothing, you know, like a little tiny joint or something or anything you could get arrested for that people get thrown in jail for that oh, i know i have people that and have, now yeah i've been very close like skin in my teeth yeah i'm getting arrested a handful of times and now i've always thought it should be legal i don't under, I never understood why alcohol is legal and cannabis is illegal it makes no sense um so it's just really nice to be alive in the time when cannabis is legal and we're enjoying the freedom of being able to sit here on this train car out in the middle of Colorado, smoking whatever we want and uh, growing legally. Uh, and there, go there is going to be a dispensary on site here yes. with some of the local products yes. in the, train, in the car train car with Miracle Farms, I, I believe. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Awesome. That sounds yeah. great. And I know this is going to be one of my tourist destinations whenever I'm out. I'll be down here at least once a month. Yeah. Uh, we'll see in the winter yes how many people are still here and what's operating and oh, it's quiet. What, the, what the weather and the drive is like it the quiets drive can be down treacher, yeah treacherous. it does it quiets down a bit in the winter it's just so cold but um anyone who wants to come out here and join us on this train car and see what we do come on out you'll be welcome yeah you won't you will not be disappointed yeah well highly appreciate it well, thanks thanks and, for coming uh, and having let's, us let's go out and enjoy the festives i will all right thank you thank you would you like to grow your own cannabis at home? Are you able to now because it's legal in your state? Are you intimidated by the prices of seeds and worry if you can't even get the seeds to germinate? Are you worried it may be a waste of money and time to even try? This is how I felt when I first started growing for myself. Hundreds of dollars were spent and wasted because of my inexperience. Some of them got overwatered. Some of them were burnt by hot soil. Some didn't have the right environment and conditions to survive. If this is the case, and you are hesitating to purchase seeds, for a limited time, Little Farmer is offering 50 random seeds from his personal collection for only $50. That is 50 seeds for only $1 each. Normal prices for seeds start around $10, and some people charge even more than that. 
This is a great way to get a lot of seeds without having to spend a lot of money. This is a great chance for all those who are intimidated by the prices and don't have to worry about failing on their first attempt for germination. This is also a great opportunity to see what goes well in your environment. As we all know, some strains will grow better in different regions due to the climate, and you will be able to see what thrives in your area with the variety that you will receive. These packs are good for experienced growers as well, as I have received nothing but great feedback thus far. Some strains included consist of Blue Dream, Gelato, Gelato Cake, Vanilla Haze, Head Smack, Green Crack, Purple Headband, Granddaddy Perps, Han Solo Burger, Tangy, GG4, Dynachem, Night Nurse, Golden Goat, Cookies, GMO, and many more. To get your hands on these packs, you will need to head over to Little Farmer website at www.littlefarmer.com. That is L-I-L-P-H-A-R-M-E-R.com and put in an order. While there, you can browse other items available, including the tree lock box to carry around all your consumption needs around in one handy lockable box. Included in the box is a pipe, a grinder, a container for your herb, a lighter, and two handy tools to help you prepare your herbs and your hash. My favorite thing about the box is the tray that you can use to break up your herb while preparing it for consumption. It is hard to spill and easy to clean up. I don't travel anywhere without mine. Finally, if you need any consulting for your home growing needs, please contact Little Farmer from his website's contact us page by leaving a message. We can help you with your lighting, growing mediums, and other growing questions because I not only sell seeds, but I help you grow them too. Make sure to take advantage of these seed prices while they last because they won't last long. And now, back to the show. I'm sitting here with BK Roller. He's the Chief Operations Officer of Dark Horse Genetics, and they are the breeders of Bruce Banner. We're down at Area 420 today for the Harvest Festival with Heart and Soil. And uh, I want to ask you, BK, what got you into breeding? Well, um... I guess what got me into breeding is the same thing that got me into growing. Uh, my high school sweetheart at the time um, got diagnosed with stage four cervical cancer. And they pretty much tried everything. They cut, froze, uh, used radiation, chemo. They used chemo that was experimental, not even on the market yet. Um, and then they sent her home on hospice. Uh, to basically die at 16 years old, and I wouldn't accept it. Um, my father grew, and so I heard stories about THC helping with cancer, and um, that's that's why I started growing. Um, but I found strains that, you know, would would affect her negatively, and some that would affect her positive positively, and. Um, one of them was blueberry that was like her favorite but it just wasn't high in thc so um when i started growing i started growing to produce rick simpson oil um you know back in the day that information was traded around because i come across it in like 89 88. And what year did you start breeding um i started breeding in 90. 90. yeah so yeah that's um, some of the first information i ever got too on the internet was rick simpson oil yeah um and i'm i'm i was blessed to come across that uh you know it changed everything and her liking a, a low thc strain um is got what got me into breeding because you know i had to pump up that thc or try to figure out a way to and so i hit the original blueberry clone to a white russian male um, at the time, White Russian was the most potent strain, that commercial strain that you could buy in seed form. And uh, it was testing around 22%, if I remember correct. And so I found a, a phenomenal male. I did my whole phenol hunt just looking for, you know, males. That's all I kept. Um, I didn't really, yeah, I didn't keep a single female out of that. But I hit that to the blueberry, and it, I got a phenol out of it that was really strawberry, um, really potent and it it didn't give her anxiety it didn't you know have that raciness that a lot of potent strains seem to have with her and so I made the oil from that to begin with um, 
Then, much later down the road, uh, Kush came in to the scene, and, you know, Kush was like the most potent weed I had ever fucking smoked at the time. Uh, and you could always tell Kush in the bag because no one knew to take it 10 weeks, you know? They were all pulling it like eight, nine. So it would be so much still white pistols on it, you know? And you, so you see it in the bag. And the pistols were jagged. They were, they just stood out uh, di different from any other bud that I'd had. And luckily with the crew that I ran with um, and like I said, uh, being second generation grower, my dad grew some fire, some legendary shit that's been so known. You told me you were from Kentucky, right? Yeah. And you yeah. Did, did, was it all outdoors at the time? Yes, all, all of dad's was. Um, I didn't have, I had a small amount of luck outdoor, but you know, you kind of put out three to four times what you expected to bring in because you'd lose them to hunters and cops. Yeah. You know? I don't think you can find that OG here because everybody breeds for eight weeks here in Colorado just because it's short season. If it's outdoor, right. indoors, it's a lot commercial, so everybody's running on a time frame and they want right. to get it short. So that 10 week is something that most commercial growers aren't going to grow for one thing. And <coughs> you got to have a longer season like California. Yeah. That's where the OGs are yeah. popular, famous. You can, I mean, you can do it in a commercial setup because, I mean, what got me with Dark Horse is Dark Horse was focused around Kush as well and the medicinal aspects of it. So all of our rooms are set up on 10 weeks. The broad range of, um, of cannabinoids throughout it all, right? We're still learning so much as we approach. Um, people are just now getting to the fact, uh, just in the last, what, five years or so, the fact that the terpene changes everything in the cannabinoid profile. Like you can take the same cannabinoid profile and administer a different terpene with it, you're gonna have a different effect. And that, you know, medicinally blows my mind because that's what I've always been breeding for is trying to create true medicinal strains. It's great for recreational because they're always high in THC. But the point is, is how THC and cannabinoids kind of auto-correct our autoimmune system. You know, they put it back in check is the best way that I can describe it. And the weird part is it's no one size fits all, you know? Um, yeah, it affects everyone differently. Because you can take CBG and combine it with CBD and it will floor you. It will, you know, make you feel more sedated <laughs> than you've ever felt before. And there's no THC in there. Mm -hmm but it's still high quality medicine. Um, it, it, the same could be said with that same profile with adding THC. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I breed perfect or for terpenes. Mm -hmm. That's loud smells, no matter what spectrum they are on the terpene profiles. Just, I like them loud. Mm -hmm. And I think the THC levels kind of go hand in hand. If it has good terp, then the THC levels will be elevated in certain strains, mm -hmm. but not all of them. And it is the most medicinal aspect of the plant is the terpene profile. And you, you told me you grow for the terpene profile OG Kush, and that's one that's barely really sought after, and it's hard to capture. Mm -hmm. What are some strains that you guys have at Dark Horse Genetics that carry some of that OG terpene profile that people can get their hands on? Well, the number one, I'm always going to refer to Jason's uh, first creation, which was Bruce Banner. Um, not only does it have that OG in it, that's why we call it the Banner 3, the three-leaf pheno. So it's OG dominant, right? And um, it's a little sweet uh, for an OG, but when you get into the F2s, which we just released, um, you know, you can find more OG dominant phenos and go that direction. Now, the next one is probably the King's Banner F2s because it's primarily a mash of OGs. And so to work backwards per se, you know, to look for that OG dominant in a nice pheno hunt of either one of those, you're gonna have, uh, you know, you're gonna find something you're happy with, I'm pretty sure.
yeah, I got to get my hands on some of those. I'm looking for some OG and some real rank stuff myself to add to my collection. Yeah. And uh, I got one of those Runtz clones from you looking very sweet today. Thank you for that. Yeah, for sure. Can't wait to put that into my collection. And I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing some of your knowledge with us here. I'm going to get a couple more breeders in here and have them talk about the same thing. And uh, I'll let you get back to your stand and make some money on your on your product sure, out there. For sure, bro. Right, appreciate right. you. Thank you, BK. Uh-huh. Do you have a business with a product or service that you would like to advertise? Now you are able to hear on Reefer, the Reefer, the podcast. These ad slots will be limited to products that we endorse here on Reefer, the Reefer, and would be a great opportunity for exposure at a cheaper rate due to the fact the podcast is still new. So in the future, when new listeners tune in, they will hear about your products and service and they will be assured that it is a good product that we endorse here on Reefer the Reefer and use it ourselves. Contact Little Farmer on his website or send an email to littlefarmer at outlook.com for more information. And now back to our show. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with Sam from Beyond Hype Seed Company. He came to Denver from Nebraska just because he loved cannabis, and I'm going to let him explain that a little bit to you. Hey, Sam, could you tell us why you came to Colorado and got into the breeding? Well, I originally grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, and um, over the years I caught like four different pot charges there and was just tired of getting bothered by the police for smoking weed. So I decided to come out to Colorado, and I had friends and family out here already, so I had people that were willing to let me crash a couch until I was able to get a place going, and it's been, you know, ever since. Yeah, I came out here for similar reasons. I didn't have any charges, but it was just to get away from what was going on where I was at. There was a lot of drinking, a lot of opiates going around, and a lot of death and a lot of depression. So I left, and just to come back here to Colorado because I knew some people and been a lot happier since. Well, for sure. And we were talking about how we both got started about the same way we smoked as kids because we were introduced to it. And then we both realized the same thing that it helped us with a little bit of ADHD. And uh, how else did it help you as a youth? Um, it just sort of helped me with like, I guess, paying attention in school. Like I've always been the kid that's been bouncing off the walls and um, like teachers were trying to suggest to my parents to like do, you know, Ritalin or all those other like ADHD drugs. And uh, my parents didn't want to go that route with drugs and all that, which thank God for that. Um, and I ended up smoking weed just because I used to smoke cigarettes and that's how I started smoking weed is all the kids would meet at like the smoker tree before school and uh yeah which is funny because it's like everyone calls weed the gateway drug it's tobacco I mean it totally is tobacco that was tobacco was the first thing that I consumed it was easy to take a cigarette out to the neighbor's pack and go hide around the corner and smoke yeah exactly and that's where I mean I encountered most of all the other kids who were smoking weed and I was like oh yeah I'll try that and you know smoked it and ended up going to class and yeah, I mean, it did real well with being able to study because whenever I was actually in school, I'd get mostly A's, but it was skipping that did <laughs> most of the problem for me. Yeah, I was too hyperactive to sit around. I played a lot of sports, which helped me get a lot of my aggression and energy out there, which didn't really help me focus in school, but school was too easy, really, so it was yeah. kind of boring, and it's just like, it helped me get through college because I didn't consume much in high school. It was only weekends and after sports because it really okay. helped me with my pains. That's how I, I really fell in love with it too. Besides ADHD, it was the pain relief I had from sports. <clears throat> and that's a big issue now though with the uh, kids and Ritalin, Ritalin in America and medicines for ADHD are off the charts. Oh, and yeah. and I'm glad my parents never put me on anything like that too. Thank you, mom and dad. Yeah, I, I really do appreciate my parents for not trying to go that route. I mean, they've done studies now where Ritalin is shown to shrunk, shrink the brain of children. We're taking that and it's... And what's the new one? Adderall is what a lot of people are prescribed now and it's Adderall been told, and, I've heard is similar to crystal meth on the brain and how your brain reacts to it. it. It's pretty much meth that's made in a lab. 
if you really look at it. I mean, there's very similar chemical components to it. Yeah, I know a lot of people who uh, I used to work in the dispensary would come in and they were mothers. I wanted some of the homie clean my, my, my house and uh, make it not such a tedious job and keep me focused so they don't get distracted, you know? Yeah. And they were tired of drinking a glass of wine or using some type of Adderall. I've heard that's one drug of choice for people who are in that situation. They're tired, they need to get something done around the house and that's their go-to. Yeah, I had a lot of friends who used that stuff in uh, college to just get passed on like midterms and everything of that nature. It's just, it's nasty stuff. Yeah, I told people weed it was the one that helped me uh, get through college. If not, I would have never had the patience. Yeah. And I probably would have got in a lot of trouble <laughs> with alcohol and whatever else was going on. For sure. But uh, so when you came out here, what actually got you into breeding? Well, I mean, breeding came down the line. Like when I first came out here, I was just living with someone and they were growing. And I would just, you know, sort of help them here and there on their house. Um, and then it got to the point where it just funds were getting low and I needed, uh, it was like, okay, I'm about to have to move back home. And I had some buddies offer to put me on in a spot and they're like, all right, we'll teach you how to grow. You do, you know, all the growing, we'll toss you a cut. And that's sort of how I got into growing and, uh, which I always wanted to do anyways, but it just didn't have the means or didn't have anyone that, you know, was down to teach me and I'd read books and stuff, but it's a total different ball game. Uh, is, you know, reading a book and having someone that actually, you know, has been doing it for years. Yeah, I'm the hands-on experimental type. I got to learn hands-on. I yeah. can watch a video and redo it, but I got to learn. I got to do it hands-on. So I had a friend who brought me in and told me a lot, taught me a lot, and then I just expanded from there. And it's uh, just intriguing once you get into it. It's such a plan. It's engulfing, and there's so many varieties out there. It's just this beautiful plant to watch grow. Oh, for sure. So when they put me on though, it was like, you grow these strains, you only grow these strains, you grow it this style, you only grow it this style. It's like, you're doing it the way I teach you because that this works, this is how, you know. Yeah, they got a method gonna, that worked. Yeah, this is successful, so you follow this. Once you buy out or do whatever, then you know, you can do whatever you want. That is a commercial plan. Yeah, and so, uh, it was just sort of being bound by only having these genetics that is the second I was like let go I was like oh, okay what else is out there and I guess sort of what I've gotten into breeding is the love of the plant I, I love the genetics and you know I can't just grow like one strain and just one strain only and just have that smoke I love the variety and that it offers and there's smoke that's going to be better for you know daytime there's going to be stuff that's going to be better for my nighttime use as well so medicinal purposes is another reason um is just having you know the genetics that suit me for you know what i'm doing during the day that's or, exactly why i or, started too because uh on a commercial like you said it's certain strains because they produce well on a schedule you can get them out commercially and that's it but when i grow i like to grow for myself personal different times of day a good sativa in the morning something relaxing at night exactly something in the daytime that just depends on how i feel that day if i want to take a nap something a little heavier if i want to keep working push through another sativa or something you know yeah <clears throat> and it was all personal and that's a big difference from a breeder that's why i went the breeding route instead of the commercial route because of that reason yeah it's In the same way it's i don't like being bound by like the you can only grow these genetics because this is all the you know uh, sells well uh, under our business plan and because they yield the best and we market them the best and it's like you know there's a ton of genetics out there that are great that aren't the most popular uh, strain yeah um, I've grown some that don't produce well just because of the turf profile is something that suits me oh, and yeah. I don't have to worry about it producing a whole lot of weight and making money back off of it that's one good reason not to be a breeder for sure <laughs> and producing your own medicine uh, what are some of the strains that you prefer to grow for yourself? Um, I like a lot of like the old school, like the Kims and um, headbands, stuff like that. Um, also, if I'm going on like the fruitier end, um, blueberry is my flavor. Uh, that's 
The strain I'm working with at the moment is a blueberry muffin top male. So I took a pre-99 blueberry and I hit it with a muffin OZ Kush. The muffin OZ Kush came from dying breed seeds. Um, so I found the male with that and hit it uh, to the blueberry. So that's where I'm doing my work on at the moment. Um, I'm currently working on some fems with uh, the Magoo's Whorehouse. So it's Bordello and uh, Blue Magoo. So I like a lot of like the blueberry end of things, and then um, more sedating. Yeah, like Relax- body high. I mean, like just relaxing and not such the head. Exactly. Um, the blueberry muffin top, though, there are it is a pre ninety nine blueberry that was used on it, so it's a little bit more on that sativa leaning nice. side. So it is a bit more on the hybrid. So it's going to give you a nice like body high, but it's not going to put you down sleep wise. You'll still have a nice head high as well with it i would call that one the dispensary one something i would call it as hot tub weed hot tub weed. yeah, yeah there you like go you would uh be relaxed enough to hang out in a hot tub but you wouldn't be too relaxed to fall asleep you're still a little sociable nice yeah i always like to call it uh my vacation weed so it's like if i'm on vacation i smoke some of this it's like i'm nice relaxed but it's like i'm still awake that i can go do stuff whatever i want to do during the day and um have a good time yeah, I like the old school strains too. I'm, I'm messing around. I, I got some gr- a green crack and a nice. Dynacam and a, a purple headband that all came from uh, existing caregivers in the system here in Colorado. So okay. they were pretty pretty good cuts to produce well, but really nice terps. And I I, 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 I grow for terps. That's why I like loud terps. Yeah. Because they just give you those different feelings. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, what are some of the terpene profiles that you find in your in your strength, does it actually have a blueberry smell? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can uh, show it to you. Like uh, when, uh, after the interview, I do have a jar of, uh, yeah, I mean, it's straight up like the Hostess blueberry muffins. It's sort of like the like the little mini muffins that come in the packs. Mm-hmm. That's what that smells like. It, it's that straight old school blueberry. What is the uh, lineage on that? Did you already say it? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a pre-99 blueberry crossed with a muffin OZ Kush. Muffin OZ Kush. I, I'm not familiar with that strain myself, so the, but I like Kushes. Um, OZ Kush, it's uh, Eddie Lep OG and uh, Skittles, um, Dying Breed Genetics. Well, so they bred that, and then they took that, and they hit it with uh, Muffin. And Muffin is, uh, I guess, a Covial Blue Kush is what they say. And that's about all the information I have on it from the you know lineage they've released um, when they sold the seeds. Um, but yeah, I like old, a lot of the older blueberries. That green crack when you were talking about that, that one has me intrigued as well. Uh, yeah, I got a, I got this right here. You want to give it a smell? That oh. was one of my first um, mixes. It was it's called Head Smack. It's got purple headband mixed with the green crack. Ooh, because I like nice. the purple headband taste. That had that earthy and nice uh, purple smell to it. The classic, what people call a purple smell, and then uh. But it didn't have the head high, so I mixed it with that green crack. And the you green can crack gave smell it the green crack in like the background of it, but definitely get that purple headband in the front. Yeah, it's got that grapey or like purple smell berry with like a little bit of that pineapple-y. Like the green crack, it was had a pineapple smell on the back yeah. end of it, the one that I grew. Um, I'm working with a cross right now um, with a green crack and the blueberry muffin top. So the, it's currently been popped in a few different uh, facilities. Uh, that I gave out for testing and then I'm about to be popping some seeds of it as well but I called that one uh, nose muffins nose muffins yeah <laughs> I'm intrigued I'd like to get like to get uh, maybe a cut of something a blueberry or something uh, I don't have time to be no hunt I got so much stuff going on myself yeah I, I got a very good day record which is my of my OG alley it's supposed nice. to be the original day record which came from a sour diesel and to Kim 91 it's okay. a twenty-year-old cut that's never been feminized or never been seeded, so it's cut. Uh, it's a clone only. So is it the old day record cut that used to circulate around uh, here, like probably I don't know, eight years ago? Yes, sir. That's okay. the one. That, I love that. Cut. The one that has that skunky after, like you yeah. would take it out of your car, and the next day you'd be like, I still smell the. You skunk. smell it, and you're like, okay, that smells like old school sour. Yeah, right but there. it's yeah. it's degraded. I need to get the Maristem uh, clean and take it back to its glory, but I been using it to breed with so it's still kicking out some good beans and uh other than that i had a dynakim okay and the dynakim came from the same source as a day wrecker gotcha and it was one of so terpy that i had thrown up two or three times when i was helping my friend trim it you know oh, really? just like oh, 
I'll be back. And then I, just, I had to stop. It was so chemi and so terpy that, and it produced. It was the highest producing one. Of always just nice self standing structure, no no weights. It was it was the guy I was telling you about earlier that had okay. the terpiest stuff ever. Yeah. And it was just the conditions. I don't know. Maybe it was the cold nights or what it was, but it was a little stress on there somehow, which brought out those terps. Nice. But uh, <clears throat> do you, did you mix any chems with that blueberry? Uh, yeah, so I do have, uh, it's called Motor City Blues. It's a uh, Motor Breath 15 crossed to the blueberry muffin top. And that one's a really nice one. Like some of the phenols turn out just really chem OG dominant, like from the Motor Breath itself. And then there's a few phenols in there that go more on like a blueberry OG. Um, side of things, but yeah, that one's a really nice one. Uh, another one that I have that's on like the Kimmy side of things is Glitter Litter, and I took a uh, Litter Box, which is GMO crossed a creme, a creme. That one's bred by Canna Divine, um, and I hit that one with the blueberry muffin top as well. So that one, there's some uh, like gassier uh, style things. It doesn't really lean too much on the GMO, but it's a really Kim like funk to it. Um, and then the other ones, uh, phenol wise, that you're gonna find in are like a guava berry style um, flavor. Yeah, I like that guava smell or that island fruity. Yeah. And there's some papaya stuff going out there too. It's pretty, pretty nice smell. It's really smooth though. It's not yeah. the real pungent smells. Um, there's some of those papaya that I've smelled that I'm just like, ooh, that's nice. But then like, there's a lot that I, I smell where you just like he said, where it's like smooth and sort of subtle. I had a had a talimon or something like that that came out very similar to the uh, that islandy smell, but with the fruity cantaloupe or apricot maybe even okay. behind it. it. It was produced well, but just didn't have the turf profile that I like. It yeah. wasn't loud enough. And uh, I think one of my favorite strains is vanilla haze. That's okay. one that I like a lot and I grow that people rave about. It has real nice high terpenaline. I don't know if I've heard of that one. What's the uh, genetics on that? That's got a super silver haze mixed with some blue satellite. Oh, okay. Which is up that blue alley with the yeah. like a flow from DJ Short. Uh, uh, like a uh, high a cerebral life, high with a high creativeness to it. Yeah. So the, that mix comes out really cerebral, really soaring high. And that's one I like in the morning or for the midday when I'm kind of tired and I want to push through. Yeah. You have any good sativas like my roommate likes to call him working weed. Like um, he'll, work, he'll get in the garage and just start going at it. And uh, on my lineup, be focused. I probably wouldn't say I have anything that's like straight working weed. Um, the closest thing I have that's more on the sativa line would be the uh, Blue Lamoon, and uh, that's got the Lamoon cake in it, uh, which is a Lamange wedding cake. But uh, it's just. I find with a lot of the citrus strains, they hit, tend to be a little bit more on the sativa side of things for smoke yeah. of that uppity high. Yeah, this one uh, doesn't really have much of that citrusy limonene in it. Yeah. Which I don't really prefer too much because it gets me too racy. Yeah. This one has a straight hay smell like that. Okay. That I, I prefer. That's why I like it. But you just don't find too many of those sativas growing up here just because of the altitude, because of the climate, and uh, it's cold. The humidity yeah and and they take a long time to flower so a lot of people stay away from that especially on the commercial side and uh it's a shame but everybody's always looking for them like a dirt and poison or some kind of uh flow is a good one uh, this one i have i really I, like a i lot. really do like flow that was a nice one yeah it's a real creative one i have a friend who who likes to write songs and when he smokes some of it he's, he just goes at it notebook yeah filled up pretty quick nice but hey i appreciate you coming on the show sam i'm gonna let you get back to your stand so you can get some money out out of your beans yeah. out there and tend to your customers but uh sounds wanna good have you in again sometime soon and we'll discuss this a little further and uh enjoy the harvest festival will do and thank you for having me on no worries man highly appreciate it
call him Dr. Earth. For the healing meditation and good vibration. For food, fuel, vibe, and a little bit of fun. See, the joint ain't necessarily the point, but I want one. 